This is All Things Considered, NPR from two weeks ago. It all started when a student at NYU's business school walked into the class of Professor Scott Galloway a full hour after the lecture had started. Galloway stopped the lecture, and he asked the student to leave. The next day, the professor received an email. The student wanted to offer a little feedback about how the professor could improve his demeanor. So Professor Galloway wrote back, and the letter went viral online. So we asked our own Baz Luhrmann, producer Phil Harrell, to set Galloway's letter to music. Thanks for the feedback. I, too, would like to offer some feedback. Get your together. There is a baseline level of decorum that we expect of tomorrow's business leaders. Getting a good job, working long hours, keeping your skills relevant, navigating the politics of an organization, finding... So, anyways, uh, I had a, a stu an exchange with a student, and for about seven days, nothing happened. And then all of a sudden, my email, I started getting barraged with email from people. It got forwarded outside the class, and it peaked at an email every 11 seconds, uh, including uh, a, a great deal more than I'd anticipated being copied to the dean uh, from people all over the world commenting about what had happened. Oops, need to go back. And I think it's an interesting um, look at what happens when an organization is faced with something they weren't expected around social media. And I also wanted to try and dissect what makes an outbound communication viral, because I thought I've done a lot of stuff for clients and in my own businesses that I would have loved to have gone viral and haven't. And this thing did. And so I started thinking, what components, how do you dissect this such you can start to figure out what is the rocket fuel to make something go viral? Because if you can figure that out, you might be onto something special. Uh, and as an example, we uh, at Stern spent a lot of time. This happened exactly the same day that we announced that uh, our second Nobel laureate was joining the faculty, which in the world of academia is a big deal. Uh, a guy named Mike Spence was joining us from um, uh, Stanford. Thank you, Sonia. And we have a tracking system, and that news got approximately 250,000 views nationwide. And this, this email got approximately 11 million views nationwide. <laughs> so Stern wasn't quite sure how to respond to that. And I said, OK, well, what is it about this email that, that gave it some sort of virality, if you will? And this is the best I could do to dissect it. The very first thing is authenticity. And it's sort of counter to your ability in this room to make anything go viral. And the reason why is I'm pretty sure anything that legal approves immediately can never go viral, <laughs> right? When you say authenticity, what authenticity is, is authenticity is essentially the value proposition is voyeurism, right? right? Uh, and that is it's a chance for people to, to, to get some sort of titillation, right? Or some sort of insight into something that they ordinarily aren't allowed to see. And so what was obvious about this email was that it was not approved by anybody else at Stern. That this wasn't, this wasn't an email that in any way the organization or even the professor expected would be made public. So this creates, if you will, this incredible tension around social media and what organizations are trying to do. Because while at the same time you have certain standards around decorum, certain standards around the way your brand is presented, those very inhibiting factors reduce the virality of anything. So some of the things that are, have gone viral uh, in your organizations are generally third parties who do things that get some organic growth. And you decide to kind of check back right, on your screens and kind of let them go with it. So it's almost, it seems, that the, your greatest opportunity for letting something go viral is to let something happen organically and then, if you will, not get in the way of it. Uh, sense of humor. People found this funny. Right? Dogs on skateboards. Anything that's cute or funny seems to have viral rocket fuel. Uh, and then finally, if you put out something, if, if everyone had thought that this email that I was right or the student was right, I don't think it would have gotten nearly the amount of forward. But it created a debate. And um, in all honesty, a lot of very articulate, thoughtful people who I respect told me I was all wet, that, that I was totally out of line doing this. And it created a discourse through the ether, right? uh, which uh, created more and more views. And uh, on Deadspin, in his example, which is the blog that broke, broke the story, so to speak, 
It has numbers of views and uh, comments. And I think comments are actually a better way of measuring the power of a story because it shows how people, pa how passionate people are. And this got about 360 comments and people going back and forth with, with each other.